Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash cultural stew. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Please listen carefully. Welcome to the Cultural Stew Podcast, coming to you from the Goat Factory Media Entertainment Studios. We are your cultural media recommendation podcast, giving you our take on what we think is worth carving your time out for, and also what we think you can pass on and maybe go cut that lawn instead. Warning, we use adult language, and there may be spoilers ahead. Hello and welcome. This is our show for the week of January 27th, 2019, and it is also our anniversary episode. Happy this anniversary. Is our 27th episode. Wow. Yeah, we've made it a whole year. <clears throat> Do we, we look older? <laughs> no. We definitely don't look wiser. No. <laughs> I look different. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how is everybody? I am Ron Hergens Jr. I am here with Tony Carter and Valerie Vidmar. Yes. How is everybody surviving our winter storm? It's cold. I mean, yeah. fine. Jason was gone, so I was roof raking and shoveling, and actually like it. Hmm. I mean, it. it I hate it all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It gives me some. It gets exercise, and it helps with. Uh, I don't know, like it, it, internal issues. I think it's exercise. If I, can't, if I can't get to the gym, it's a good exercise. Uh, for those who follow us that aren't here in New York, we had uh, about two feet of snow in, dumped on our area last week. So it kind of delayed our show by a week because we weren't able to get here. See, um, and then we've had really, 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 really cold temperatures and they're going to get even colder this week. So it didn't, well, it melted. Well, so we no, had one day. Of, one day of melting. One day, I got to like 46. Yeah. Teas. And then, which is actually horrible because it melts and then all at once it drops down and then you've got ice everywhere. I hate it from a running perspective because the trails, everybody goes out as soon as it warms up because they're like, oh, yay, we're going to go out. <laughs> well, what they do is they create big giant footprints that the next day completely freeze up and now mm. those are everywhere. So I'm like mm. breaking ankle mm. level. Well, we're going to hop right into our show. We're going to go through our news that we care about, some new trailers, um, and then we're going to go into our stew, which is? Um, the art of success and losing. So, But I'll before keep... that, we're going to go into our recommendations, because apparently I forget how our show is formatted. It's been so long. <laughs> it, can, it can change. Yeah. We're going to go into our recommendations, then into our stew, and then uh, what's on our radar and what's on our queue. Cool. So uh, first, uh, some news that we care about. So the last show, um, we talked about the Golden Globes. They were that night. Um, was there any surprises? Did we get anything right? I think we got a few things right. I was surprised, if I'm correct, that, I mean, I, even though I enjoyed it, Bohemian Rhapsody won, right? Yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody won a lot, and The Star is Born won oh, almost geez. nothing. Yeah. I, I think it got best song? Yes. Uh, yes. That might have been it. That's it? Um. Olivia Coleman won. But Bohem- I, was happy I mean, with that. this is the. I mean, international. Film yeah, they critics. love Queen. Yeah, so, it'll be interesting to see how it does going forward. Um, I don't think it's going to do as well. Um, it looks like Green Book is going to be the one that's going to pick s- up. Yeah, seen it. Was Bohemian Green Rhapsody build. only got <clears throat> five nominations for the Oscar. Yes. So. Green, Green Book and Favorite seem like they're the ones that are settling for what you, I wouldn't say Oscar bait, but they're the ones that are settling in Potential. as like, they're out of what I think is a pretty weak year in film. I mean, it was a okay year. I mean, there were some good films out, but there wasn't anything that popped like, out wow. like it did the year before. Like, um, well, about- yeah, like Christopher Nolan's film and, and Shape of Water, like those things just stood a head and shoulders above the rest of what was out there. Right. Um, this year just haven't had that feeling as to like, oh, yeah, that looks really good and that's life changing. Right. Yeah, there's not a lot of movies that I'm I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go see them, but I haven't. Like some of them I just like, ugh, I don't really want to see this, but I will. Like I don't what? know why. Like what? Um. I don't know why, but I think the trailer for Green Book 
makes it seem a little boring. I can see that. Yeah. But um, I'll see it. I'm, I, I saw the wrong movies. I went to see Mary Queen of Scots. And, it's a good movie. Um, I liked it, but uh, the favorite I didn't get to. The movies were all in the wrong at the wrong time, like okay. for me to be mm-hmm. able to go. So I just went to the movies that I could go before my girls got out of school. And a bunch of them are out of theater here locally already. I mean, they were. I mean, they're coming all on. I was yeah. scrolling through Apple TV, and it's like everything's going to be out within the next like two weeks I on did see rental. That. I didn't see that. So that's I, not a bad play. Um, but it's just it's was weird to me because I'm like, oh, there's really nothing left in the theater. Well, because I was gonna go see, um, the wife in the theater this week, but I was able to watch it this morning, so that worked out. Um, there was a there was a phenomenon I had for a while actually where, and Grace can tell you about this too. Uh, that's my wife that. I always was able to determine who was going to win the best picture based on DVD releases. So for a while ago, before, I think it was before The Artist, I would wait <laughs> to see which DVDs came out on you know DVD, and then I would actually say, well, whichever one's not out on DVD yet is the one that wins best picture. And it happened for a few years where it happened. where Life before and after The it, Artist. <laughs> yeah. So it's like <laughs> The Artist, it didn't have, you know, had DVD in it and won. I'm like, well, that threw that off. But before then... A lot of movies were released on DVD, and they didn't win Best Picture of the Oscars. And now things are so instantaneously on streaming services, it doesn't matter anymore. And it's just, Mm -hmm. hmm. I don't know. I can't, I mean, this year I think I have an idea, but then again, I have other things I'm thinking about too, about how they reward Best Picture. Like, the social network could have won Best Picture, but it wasn't based completely on fact or some embellishments. And I think that kind of makes voters think, well, this is not totally accurate and not a real representation of the subject matter, so we can't reward it. But it's just a whole lot of Man. things I've been... So with the Golden Globes, I know we got um, we got the Spider-Verse. Yes. We picked that one. Um, Olivia Coleman. I, oh, I was happy so for glad to see Olivia that. Uh, Spider-Verse? Yes. I saw it. Oh, I just... We were going to go see it. And then something happened. I can't remember what happened. We were all excited. And we didn't get to see it, so I'm kind of mm. can't remember what it was, but we didn't. Get, the, the girls were ready to go, so I'll talk about it a little bit later. But I really enjoyed it. Do you think the girls would go? Oh, absolutely! I really want to see it. If they like superheroes or Spider Man no, at they, all, they don't care. No. I mean, they thought it was funny. Zoe liked the preview, the trailer, so that's kind of what she bases it on. Is from an artist perspective, it was really good. The the mix of 2D and 3D animation on top of each other was pretty cool. Hmm. Um, so we had the Oscar noms yes. released this week. Yes. What was good? What was bad? I don't know because, uh, you guys, I am behind. Well, there are so many that I have not seen. Have you guys seen Vice? Seen I've, Vice? No. I've read it. So. What did you think? I like it. I need to see it. Probably I not. I really am behind. It's this is probably one of the worst years I've had in a long time. But um, it's because I picked the girls up, so they get home like almost an hour earlier, and it, it, that little forty five minutes kind of nips at the bud. You can get into Pittsburgh or like nowhere else really. Um, but I was. Let me think. Is anybody surprised by any of the best picture? So best picture we have, um, they nominated, I'm sorry, my voice, A Star is Born, Black Landsman, Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, Roma, 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 and Vice, um, The Favorite, and Roma got 10, Star is Born, 8, Black Landsman got 6 nominations, Black Panther, 7, Bohemian Rhapsody, 5, um, Green Book Five. Um, First Man got four. <laughs> That's always, I thought that was funny. And Vice got eight. I did see First Man. So I'm well, like one of the first things that popped out to me, and this kind of solidified my like how this is a weak year, is that they have the ability to nominate ten, and they nominated eight. Mm-hmm. And of those eight, maybe five are worthy. 
Which one? Whereas like, I was it know. last year? They, you know, there were, we were talking about two or three other ones that could have been in that top 10 nominations that didn't make it in. Like Logan didn't even get nominated last year. Right. And as much as I appreciate Black Panther and I really like Black Panther, Logan was a better movie than Black Panther. I agree. Um, so that kind of, that's the leveling factor for me. Um, I really enjoyed Black Klansman. I liked it a lot. Um, I think Spike is nominated for Best Director, right? He is, yes. So I think it's going to be for like Best Director in Roma. It's going to be kind of like the who gets the Best Director, who gets the Best Picture kind of thing if Green Book kind of falls out there. I have a Spike issue. Yeah, but the movie was good. I if you know. haven't seen the movie, I highly recommend it. I will go. I mean, I'm not saying I. Oh, it's on. It's on rental already. I will see it. I um, but I met. Well, I sort of met him. I sort of met. Him. I think you've told this story. Yeah. Okay. Then I won't again. Yeah. Um. But at uh, the college, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that uh, University of Kansas Rock Talk Jayhawk. Um. Speaking of you. Know, can I say something? Go ahead. I'm listening. I'm just thinking out loud. Sorry. Okay. You keep that thought. You're drawing out loud. Yes. Speaking <laughs> of University of Kansas and Rock Talk Jayhawk, um, alumni, Barry Bennington, my father, his birthday is today. So shout out to my dad. Happy birthday. Happy uh, birthday. He also shares his birthday with uh, Amadeus Mozart. Just thought I'd share that. But yeah. So I think another um, thing that popped out was Bradley Cooper not on the director's list? I'm not surprised, but um, I, I thought I, he did a really good job with that movie. So. I know, too. I know. I'm I very, was, very shocked that he did not I, get picked to be on. There. I, I mean, he got an he got an actor. I mean, I don't know. It's interesting. Speaking of um, Kansas alumni, I think um, uh huh, the one of the core writers of Green Book is a professor at KU. Is that Kansas? Uh, of what? The uh, one of the co writers of Green Book. Oh, Green Book. Okay. He's a professor at KU. I'm not sure if that's Kansas University. University of Kansas. Is it K State? No. Yeah. It, KU is University yeah. of Kansas. Yeah. Um, I didn't he, know that. Yeah. That's what I was circling because I'm like, oh, I thought you were going to say that, but you're, you didn't. But yeah. Well, what a fantastic fact. Mm, you're welcome. When did um, I, what? Here's something I learned this week. I, I'm, I feel completely stupid that I didn't realize that John David Washington was Denzel's son. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. The one from Black oh. uh, Klansman. Yeah. So he's nominated. That's good. That's kind of, how do you really call a that? Weird, Interesting. A weird article I got across this week of somebody arguing that Denzel should have gotten nominated for Equalizer 2. <laughs> so that you'd have a father and son nominated. I can't find Can that you? information. I'll send you a link. What his name is because... My I had an issue with well a couple of things, but I'm gonna limit it to two to save time. But um, the first thing is we have another thing of Roma being in the best pick category and best foreign film category. Yep, they've yep. done that before. Yep. But yep. last year we also had a discussion about Netflix being nominated. Right. And guess what? Roma is Netflix. Roma is a Netflix movie. So and it's nominated for best picture and it won for best director. Right. So so there's that. Um, I still haven't seen it. My other issue. Well, the good thing it's on Netflix, so it's not going anywhere. Right. I know. I think that's why. Ever. But I really want to see it. And then we have the "Won't You Be My Neighbor" was completely, completely ignored. So um, that, not even on the documentary list. Not, what's on? What's on the documentaries? I'm actually. Um, the documentaries were. I'm gonna be honest. I haven't dug much into. This I just kind of glanced over. It just popped in my head. Mm. Free solo. Oh God, that if that doesn't win, that's going to be a Probably tough one. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. I'm um, again behind. It's about um, the. You remember a couple of years ago, it was all over the news. The two guys that climbed up the face of the rock with no ropes, nothing. It was everywhere. How did you not hear that? Not her field, or it has to deal with um, yeah. one of the climbers. I had babies. I don't know. But you have a husband who um, is in that circle that Adventure. probably wouldn't have stopped talking talk about it. He did not tell me. It was it was in a couple theaters this year. I didn't get a chance to see it while I was out, um, but I believe it is now on 
for rental. Did you say two guys? There were two guys. They but did it a couple of years ago. Why did you say solo? Because he did it again. Oh, okay. And it's the story and goes back and delves into his past. And then uh, there's Hail Country this morning, this evening. No idea. Minding the gap mm-hmm. of fathers and sons and RBG. RBG was RBG good. was the only one I have heard of. It's good. Have you have seen Cold War? I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either. Okay, so yeah. We've got some very interesting... I, I mean, there's some interesting stuff on here that I was like, wow, I really need to get out there and watch some stuff. The Little is your friend. I'm sorry? The Little theater. I know, I know, but it's always... In yeah, the evenings. It's evening stuff and, and getting down to the city in the evenings. And, and I totally get that. And Jason's gone a lot lately. I appreciate AMC because they bring a lot of the small ones in, but they bring them in for like a weekend. Pittsburgh and so you just need to kind of like nail it when they're due and hope that it winds in. But you like end up like with a two o'clock in the afternoon showing and that's it. Pittsburgh. But they at least some. do it. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I'm like, that's cool. Anyway. That's my piece. <clears throat> I have not heard of the, so the animated features. I'm sorry. Um, Incredibles two. Yeah. I love dogs. Mm. I don't know what Mar- is it. Murray, M I R A I. I haven't heard of that one. I haven't. Ralph breaks the internet and Spider Man. Yeah, I. For me, again, it's it's Spider Man. Right. I mean, I love dogs is pretty unique and pretty cool. I really enjoyed the the animation work, mm-hmm. but what they did with Spider Man was Fantastic. I really need to go. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, at points, it's pretty trippy, but. We will move on. We will have a, we'll have a podcast about this, I suppose. Yeah. So our next. Yes. We got two more shows and then that'll be a special Oscar podcast with hopefully our friend Dustin coming back and uh, then we'll be getting that out right before the Oscars. So you can have your own little red carpet. And mute it and listen to us and then watch the Oscars. But feel free to uh, write down what you or comment on what you feel like um, should have been on there or what you think will win. And as award season is in full swing, tonight is the... Sags. Oh, Screen Actor Guild Award. Uh, they are at... <laughs> let me think here. EST. So eight o'clock. And I believe the Sags, like TBS or TNT, aren't they? They're both. Something like that. Both of them. Anything that Ted Turner's got, they're, they're on there. So, um, and A Star is Born leads that with their, which is interesting, with um, the nominations. I watched a little video today where. Bradley got on stage with Lady Gaga and she claims she didn't know he was in the audience and he popped up there and they sing shallow together and yeah, it was heavenly. I'm sorry it was. Interesting. <laughs> Whatever. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I put it on my little Facebook and people liked it. What else? What else we got? What are the news? Uh, um, three weeks of news here. I know there's some stuff that came up. Um, for people that are into the Broadway scene, Kendra gave me this info this morning. Uh, hitting Broadway 2020 is Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, which is the Michael Jackson musical. And the person who is choreographing, doing the choreography is the person... I feel that did, which seems like an American in Paris. Does that make sense to you? Keep going. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, that's what that's what I have. That surprised me. Is this a biopic or just a jukebox musical? No idea. Okay. And yeah, it's probably in the same vein as Summer and uh, the Paul. What's the other one? Was it Paul? Not Paul Jackson. Was it Paul Jackson? Paul Abdul. Okay. Did you see? Um, it's just Moving kind of the out. running theme for the last couple of years. Yeah. Did you move- I haven't seen it. I've heard the music, though. So Moving Out was interesting because they had, I went to go see it, and the stage was like um, in a lo- two levels. So the the upper level had the band, 
and then the lower level had the actors. And so they just played the music. It just went from song to song to song, and then you had the actors coming in and dancing and doing it. It was kind of cool. What show? I, uh, moving Out. It's oh. Billy Joel's stuff. I heard crazy things about that show. I liked yeah. it. I thought it was kind of interesting. I mean, people were getting hurt. I mean, like the theatricality and the choreography was getting people hurt because they were just being so lively. And Kendra had a friend that went to go see King Kong, by the way. And I had to talk to her later. And uh, I'm just getting a little burned out by the uh, oh. the let's take a pop culture icon and make a musical out of it. Mm, it's just the last two to three years have been pretty heavy on it. So true. I think there's one, a share one as well that's out there. What? Yeah. yeah. Why? Why is it good reason? Yeah, good question. Why? Why is there a Donna Summer musical? Right. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> it's there's Carol it's King. everything's a little bit. It's just it's getting a little Cash too much for me. I think if they have an interesting life, then they don't. <laughs> they don't. My God. Okay, moving on. Um, I also They're more popular than I am. So. <laughs> I have God a little them. crush on Jason Bateman, so I put on here that Netflix is going to pair John. Is it Cena? Cena. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Um, who did Bumblebee? He was in Bumblebee, I believe. More well known for being a former wrestler and. Yeah, I but don't know that. Was his. So he is getting, so Jason Bateman and, and John Cena are going to be in an action comedy, which um, it's going to feature them. And they have you are ever caught trapped up with in a movie, the, a movie studio where the set comes to life. Have it, you caught up with Ozark? Yeah. Okay. I'm done. Um, <laughs> and But there's no date set, but they were pretty excited about that. And then I also saw... HBO uh, is doing a Sopranos prequel. Um, it's called The Many Saints of Newark. And Michael Gandolfi- Gandolfini. I miss him. I know. Well, I hope you don't miss Michael because he's still alive. Which is James <laughs> Gandolfini. I know. But James Gandolfini's <laughs> son. Um, he just didn't get the role. They did put him through. They did put him through the. Um, Paces. Yep. To make sure that he was going to be able to do it. And they said yes. So David Chase, who actually created the show, um, wrote the script with Lawrence Connor and veteran Sopranos director Alan Taylor will call the shots. I met James, by the way. I wasn't excited until I read the who else is in the cast. But who are you excited by? Like all of them. Yeah. That's a pretty John, stout. I haven't seen Vera in a long time. So she's John, in, she's doing. Um, I don't know. Is Base Motel still going? Could you pronounce the names for me? John Bernthal. He's the Punisher. Billy Magnuson. And then we have Vera Farmiga and. Uh, He's come up in the world. He's Corey from. Uh, I think he was in Camelot, Merlin. He was. Who was that? Billy or not someone else? It's a film. So it's not going to be a. Billy uh, was in Merlin. But Vera, Seriously. I haven't seen. Corey is always doing good stuff. Yeah, and it's, it'd be interesting to see how they're going to handle that. I didn't really get into Sopranos when it was out. I just know that it was very controversial ending. <laughs> <laughs> and I now that they're the going to go back was. and do the... Now they're going to go do a prequel with his son. And but the, I um, plan on watching it. I just haven't done that. I know that it's addicting once you start. It's kind of like Breaking Bad. I think we're at the, I think it's the 20th anniversary. Are you kidding? No, 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 it's not. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 20 <laughs> years went by. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it, it kind of came out around the time I moved to Chicago. And I was 20. <laughs> God, I, I can't, I don't feel I'm going to be 44 soon. In a week or two? In a week? I don't, so a we, week. Ha- we have to say happy birthday to you because your birthday will be in the past at the next show. You can say it over So it'll, it'll over probably be your birthday over. by the oh day gosh, this gets out. Cher, that works out because the Sunny and Cher song, because it's on Groundhog's Day, my birthday. Your birthday's on Groundhog's Day? Yeah. So it's oh. over and over and over and over and over again. We'll record before Groundhog's Day. Um, I just think it's funny. I like that movie. I enjoy it. 
Anyway, and you, does anybody else have any? I got uh, so we got the Sundance Film Festival going on. There's a, a bunch of new films that are popping up in there, um, and one of them is the new trailer for extre- the the title for this extremely vile and something 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 in something evil. <laughs> What? It's a, it's the Ted Bundy story with oh. Zac Efron playing Ted Bundy. I did the see trailer that. for it is phenomenal. It's going to be interesting. Um, so that premiered last night, and the trailer will share it in the link because that was one of the trailers that popped out to me. And must I say that I'm getting into the movie titles of how I like to hear movie titles? Really, extremely long names for movie titles. There's two of them in our thing today, but. It seems to be like some writers are picking up that trend of let's give something a really, really long title for the hell of it. <laughs> and it works. They keep it. Um, Ghostbusters 3 was announced. So Ghostbusters 3 is going to continue off of where Ghostbusters 2 took off and completely ignore the Ghostbusters reboot movie from a couple of years ago. Thank God. So this will be interesting. And it's being done by um, the son of... Ivan. So that's... Um, Ivan Reitman. Yeah. So, and they already released a short teaser and it was basically, you see little electricity in a barn and you, all of a sudden the wind blows off of a car and it's the Ecto-3 or the Ecto-1 is sitting there in the barn. That was their trailer for it. And apparently this has been in production for a little while now. So. What is that? Movie. So movie pass is back. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> it is. I so this week I got hammered with please come back to movie pass. Please come not. back to movie pass. I probably not. ten times. And I have blocked them from every avenue possible from sending me emails and I still keep getting emails. I haven't gotten any. So they now have three subscription levels. They don't like me. And all the way up to like twenty four ninety nine. But the thing that perked my interest was yesterday it's also now they're coming back with the unlimited plan (laughs) so i just i lost it i'm just like this is i don't know how they're doing this what are you gonna do what am i gonna do absolutely nothing i am staying away from the 10 foot pole i don't trust that company at all okay i don't know how how they're surviving or or staying afloat they burned through was it 200 million dollars in less than a year how did they get them they got money back then They're they're picking up investors, but read. Uh, it's oh. just it's just funny to me because I just keep getting please come back, please come back. No, but the funny thing was when I canceled the subscription, they told me at that time you can't come back for a year. <laughs> 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 so they keep telling me to come back. Tony but, is really yeah he's he's liking this really but cracking up about this yeah. I'm just gonna stick with AMC well, I guess Tony was the only one that didn't do it you and I well did it I was going to but then that happened hey, and I I made saved. every penny off of Movie Pass and then some I mean I was three three to four movies a month for six months there mm-hmm. I made and I was only paying less than ten dollars a month so that's nice I came out ahead I'm still coming out ahead with AMC I did like for, it. This month. This I, month, there's just not much to watch. Oh, yeah, you do AMC and I do Sonoric. Yeah. I have some news. Um, oh. So, well, it's not news. Are you pregnant? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> no. Um, well, Is it's kind of like pregnancy, kind of. Um, so, uh, the local film that was shot here last year or so with um, John Lithgow and Blyde Danner, oh. Tomorrow Man, was picked up at Sun for Sundance, and it also has... Um, Sony Pictures Worldwide has picked up the foreign rights for it. But besides that, um, it's good news because the local film that was shot here with our local actors, Peter Doyle, as a stand-in for Mr. Lithgow, is at Sundance right now and doing well. So, Peter Doyle? Yes. Um, and Peter, don't be mad. I know you're a humble guy, but we like you and I like you and we're mentioning your name. So Peter Doyle, stand-in for John Lithgow. This film at Sundance. Coming to theaters soon, we hope. That's fun. The end. So um, quickly going through the trailers, um, some good ones to watch, and we'll share them in the, the link. Um, like I said, Extremely Vile um, with Zac Efron. You put the link in there. What a guy. So nice. That was so I think nice. the last show is the only show that I haven't put the link in. <laughs> oh, well, that was very nice. Because I usually Sorry. do it as I'm putting them in. A um, uh, new one this week was Beach Bum with Matthew McConaughey. Uh, looks interesting, and I think Zach Efron's in that one as well. 
He's yeah. I, With I Jonah think he Hill, did. it's the Spring Breakers crew. Did he do his hair blonde? What was Who, that? Yeah, it's the uh, heating system. That's the old terrifying. It pops. Um, Beach yeah. blonde hair. Yeah, it was a news story. Yeah. Well, that's how he showed up to um, Sundance last night. Okay, that's it was fine. his hair was still bright blonde, so he must have just filmed the scenes not too long ago. You sound like my daughter. The cough. It's aggravated by laughter. <laughs> but it's not the hair that caught me. He's got these weird like so. Imagine like a sideburn beard, and then imagine it cut except for these straight lines that go like this all the way down. Very 80s look to it. Nobody can see what you're doing. That's okay. You can. So when you're Just cut- watch the trailer and you'll see what I mean. Yeah, there you go. Watch the trailer and now you'll see what he's talking about when he says um, they go like this, which is like basically... I keep saying we should have a webcam up so you can show people what we're but doing. It, it's from the same crew that did Spring Breakers. So it's got Jonah Hill in it and Zac Efron and a couple other uh, comedians. But it's interesting because Matthew McConaughey is in this as the beach bum s- central figure. Is he going to say something funny like... He is high on his, he is as high as can possibly be in this movie. They say it's a bitch. Um, other no ones that came out, um, Umbrella thing. Academy, I think I mentioned this before, it's Gerard Way's um, comic that was turned into a Netflix series, um, comes out in February, I believe, and so we first got our first good look at it, and it looks really good. It's got Gerard Way's music in the background from Chemical Ram- My Chemical Romance, so hopefully oh, he does cool. a whole bunch of uh, music. Apparently there's word that there's an album coming, So, but he wrote wrote it and it uh, looks really good. Um, the Boys is another superhero show that's going to be on Amazon Prime. Um, there's a link. We'll try that. It looks really good. Um, Anybody in it? Yes. Um, Carl Urban? Hmm. Is in it. When you do, mm, what does that mean? He's Give. in uh, Star Trek, correct? Yeah, and he was also a Robocop. Yeah. Okay, thank you. The new Robocop, not the old Robocop. They're um, doing a new Robocop, by the way. Peter, maybe in the reboot or restart or whatever. Did talking. I say Robocop? I meant um, Judge Dredd. Yes. Yes. I, not Robocop, Judge Dredd. Look the same okay. almost. Robocop was. Was that Colin Farrell? No, that oh, was no. a different movie. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah, everything's Bob mixed up. Stop I, know, I know you're talking Stop about. Stop talking, moving on. All right, so then in the vein of really long movie titles, um, Sam Elliott is coming out as an action hero in a movie called The Man Who Killed Hitler and Then Killed Bigfoot. No way. It's always yes. fun having fun. And it Bigfoot. actually looks good. It's got Ron Livingston and Sam Elliott in it, and Sam Elliott is basically Ron Livingston's father. And it, oh, my God. It delves into his background of him working undercover in the SS and ended up killing Hitler. And then it makes a really weird right turn as to Ron Livingston works in the FBI and they have a situation up near the Canada border and they hire Sam Elliott to come out and hunt and kill Bigfoot because he's carrying a disease that's going to kill all of um, As long as that man animals. talks in that movie. It's Sam Elliott. I'm it's Sam it. Elliott. I mean, it's, it's funny because um, – has it, why is it taking Mike, him this long to become an action hero? <laughs> why is it? Ta- I mean, he just keeps taking breaks. I'm like, just stay in the movies, please. But he, um, can I, I'm going to say this and I'm either going to come off extremely ignorant or not. Is he in Lonesome Dove? Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, him and Robert Duvall. Okay, because I was, I was trying to figure out something that Zoe could watch. Can she watch Lonesome Dove? Oh, no. It's been a long time since I've seen that. I she believe it was to... on P. Was it on PBS? She can't watch Roadhouse. I think it was on PBS or WXXI at the time when it came out. Um, so she so wants that would to watch probably something. put it on a level of yeah, it's probably okay. She digs his voice. You can hear him talking on the soundtrack of A Star Is Born, but she hasn't seen the movie, obviously. So, yeah, she really likes his voice. Yeah, he's in a lot of westerns. <laughs> I dig him. Um, <laughs> uh, other things we got a John Wick 3 uh, trailer that came out my parents and Grace are excited about that they're like addicted to John Keanu Wick Reeves is, now Keanu okay and now they're like he is coming out again I'm like, Keanu yeah. at his best I yeah. mean this is really good Keanu and it's been a good series for him right it works I mean I didn't want to watch it but I started watching it and I'm now into it so yeah. I think it's well made it is good story he, he did um, 
Matrix? No, I. God, Point you break. guys, I know who Keanu Reeves is. Please stop. Bill and Ted. <laughs> stop. No, but um, didn't he do a flick with uh, River Phoenix? Was it Dakota? Losing. Uh, what was the one that he did with River? Is Keanu on River? Uh, Something. Was it Dakota? Something. Possibly. I'm not. I don't follow too many of his '80s movies. Oh. I think there's a movie that I actually studied in, in film class that he did with uh, River Phoenix. So um, I could look it up. I have a computer in front of me. But yeah. Yeah. And the final trailer that I was going to put on here was we finally got a trailer for Spider Man Far From Home. That Yay. freaked me out in a good way. Freaked you out? Like I was excited. But then I'm like, wow. And it looked good. But I'm kind of sad. Why? They have to wait. For how long? <laughs> Summer. It, it won't be out until after Avengers. I am so tired. So how many times have we mentioned superheroes in the last... Let's see, there's one, two... Tell my, own, three, my own private Idaho three, that you're talking three about. Three trailers that came out in the last month that have to deal with superheroes. So Drinking game kids. My own private Idaho. Every, I knew it was some, something State. like... State. Yeah, my own private Idaho. Yep, watch it. It's uh, hard to watch, but good. It's It's good. Oh, River Phoenix. I miss young, him. Young Indiana. I got it. I really, I do. I miss that guy. Yeah. Now we're left with Joaquin. <sighs> well, Leaf. Yeah. Leaf, he used Leaf. to be Leaf Phoenix. When he was in Space Camp, he was Leaf Phoenix. Oh, it's a Joaquin. good movie. Yeah. Space Camp is a good movie. That is such a great movie. Have you seen it? Long time ago. Oh, my gosh. Great movie. So if you want to. Probably 10 or 11 when I saw that. I mean, that's a kid movie too. You could watch that. No, not yes. kid. Not completely kid. Yes, it is. Mm. When you There's some at? parts in it that are not oh, appropriate. I think it's over. What? And on that note, let's roll into our recommendation list. Okay. First up, Valerie. Okay. So it's a strange thing that I'm recommending this movie. I say this because I watched, I don't normally watch movies um during the day but uh kendra was ill and i was not feeling fantastic so i decided i wanted to see first reformed with ethan hawk for a long time um she has a friend that went with her to new york city lily i don't know your last name lily but who got a picture with him Outside was him with Ethan Hawke. Oh, thank you. Oh, speaking of Ethan, he just opened up a show. Yeah, she last went, night. She went last to night, the Friday previews. Night. Okay, and saw the show, and then got a picture taken with him. And she had worked with him before, and he stood and talked with her for a long time. I love him, him. and Paul Dano. Yep. Anyway, she got pictures. Those. What show is them. this? It's um called. Oh my gosh! Send it out. Send it out. I want to say it's West something. True West? True West. True yeah. West. Eh. Sam Shepard. Good show. Yes. Joe like and Sam John Shepherd. were in that show. Wow, Sam Shepard. Love Sam Shepard too. Anyway, so first reformed, I thought, okay, thriller. It is listed as a thriller. Mm. This is not something that you watch in the middle of the, I don't know when you would watch this. Um, you do not come out feeling good. I'm just going to tell you. So we started it. He, uh, Ethan Hawke, plays a minister um of a very small congregation we're talking less than 10 in a very gorgeous church it was it was beautiful the whole point was the fact that it got um redone and they were celebrating the i want to say 250th anniversary of this church anyway so his name is ernst toller in the show and he he, we find out very early on that he is really struggling with some stuff. He says something like, I'm going to keep this journal for a year. And then after the year is over, I am going to rip it up and throw it into the fire. And, um, because that will be over. Okay. We, um, we know that he's ill. We don't know what with, um, we kind of get the idea that it is, um, a cancer because he is hurting um, when he goes to the bathroom. I just thought I'd share that. Um, 
So that was our first hint. Anyway, but this movie deals with um, Amanda Siegfried. Is that her name? She was in Mamma Mia. Okay. She comes to see him and says that her husband is struggling because he doesn't want them to have their baby because of the environment and what the environment is going to be like when his son is 20, when his son is 40, and he gives all these facts and it's pretty fascinating. This, uh, I want, I watched this actually because it's up for original screenplay. Now the screenplay is extremely smart. Um, I feel that he was snubbed. I, Ethan Hawke was spectacular. I, he was so good in this film and I really thought that he deserved a nomination, but I mean, yeah, if you see it, it'd be interesting to think who you would pop out to, to put him in to, um, a best actor. So, um, he was really great. I think you should see it just if you love Ethan Hawke, um, watch it. If you, um, are wanting to get really terrified of where, uh, the earth is going, um, the facts that they bring, they bring in uh, the stuff that they he goes and mentors him and he talks to him about this whole thing and the guy just fills him with all these facts of what the earth is going to be like and the glaciers and all this stuff. It's just terrifying, true, terrifying. Um, and then the guy kills himself the next day. Um, so he is struggling with the information that he left behind um and he finds out some interesting inf- um ties between the church the money the church receives uh, this other church that um he works with the money that they receive because they're the big church that has all the money and has all the people and has the big uh he finds out about the people that give to the church the company and how they are also kind of involved with the environmental disintegration <laughs> around them. So it, I don't know. I, I don't want to give away anything. I know we're supposed to not do, you know, we do spoilers on that stuff, but I, it, um, there is a vest involved there is a you know um a love like he struggles so much with his inner feelings for Amanda and for wanting to actually just completely uh kill all these people basically because he feels like um they deserve to die i think um hmm. it's it's bizarre. There is a strange kind of moment where he and Amanda lay on each other fully clothed and they do this like meditation thing and then they kind of float through the earth seeing all the beautiful things in earth and then all at once they start floating through all the horrible things and it's just weird. And I kept looking at Kendrick saying, this is – I'm not uplifting. I am not uplifted. I am not feeling good. This is so not the movie I thought it was going to be. It was really hard. Kendra, did you spike my drink? <laughs> God. Anyway, so um, the acting is very good. The script is very smart and very good. But this is not an uplifting film. So um, if you're okay with that, watch it. And where'd you catch it? I saw it on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Is it uh, as part of the Prime membership mm-hmm. or is it by? Yeah, it's part of the Prime membership. Okay. So so if you've got an Amazon Prime, you can just go and check it out. Yeah, I would say I would say it's worth checking out if only to be educated and start really thinking about maybe um, – what are those uh, things that people have in the backyard and they compost? Yeah, I don't have a compost. 
now I feel like mm -hmm. we should do something. They're pretty easy to, to make too. Just go get yourself a couple of pallets and you right. can make yourself a three bin composter pretty quick. Do you have a compost too? I used to at my I used to have one at my mother in law's house. Um it makes you want to Yeah. It's a, definitely an Earth Day movie. If you if you eat and consume a lot of materials that can be composted, yes. Okay. You use it frequently. Cool. Anyway, there you go. Watch it. Anthony. So um, I started to watch uh, Alexander Payne's uh, latest film, Downsizing. The film stars Matt Damon, uh, Kristen Wiig. Um, there's Hong Chao. There is the great Christopher Waltz. And um, it's uh, very satirical, if I may say. Um, I mean, Alexander's films are Julie's satires and whatnot, but this one felt more blatant. Him and his co-writer, um, longtime partner Jim Taylor, wrote this sometime, I think, like seven years ago, and they finally got the green light to make it. Um, so I think this was his biggest budget film yet. Um, Downsizing tells the story of a couple who, um, not really doing well financially, decide to shrink themselves down to like five inches in size to um, live better. Um, Matt Damon's character is more environmentally, societally conscious, so he wants to leave it less of a footprint, and he also is struggling financially too, so this would help him ease his debt as well as not pollute the environment as much as possible. Um, interesting tie-in to your film. But um, I don't know. I mean, I'm on the fence here. I mean, I love Alexander Payne's writing. I love his, you know, films. This one, I kind of felt he was pushing me more than usual. Strange. Yeah. It felt like a pain movie, but it just also felt like it had an agenda, which he usually doesn't have a blatant one. But this one is more, the environment is your friend. Take care of the environment. Take care of each other. It's more in your face. Obvious. This which is not a bad thing, but um, I guess my favorite part of the film was watching Christopher Waltz or Christoph Waltz um, act. He's been one of my go-to now. I've been looking at his past films, looking at his old stage plays on YouTube and online where I can find them. and He's just phenomenal to watch. Ever since seeing him in Chenko and in... Uh, uh, what, what, and think, Glorious Bastards. Glorious Bastards, too. Just, just very subtle, Sorry. this man. And it just seems at any moment he can flip the switch from being really angry to being really happy. And he was also in um, the Bond film too. I think it's not. Yeah. So he's come a long way. He's been getting more parts, and he has two uh, Oscars actually from Tarantino. So it's just wow. I mean, so the film as a whole is good. It's fluid. I just feel like. I was watching Matt Damon in the film sometimes, and I wasn't really seeing Paul, his character. And all in all, the, the characters are good. I mean, uh, Matt Damon and Hung's character, Hung Charles' character, are basically helping each other. During, the, I think, the last half of the second act, their whole charge is going out and helping people in the... Okay, so summing it up, Paul's character lives in an apartment. His wife leaves him and stays big size. He's shrunken down, and she leaves him there, and he gets an apartment, and... Christopher Waltz is his upstairs neighbor who has parties and whatnot. And there's a cleaning lady, you know, she's, you know, cleaning houses, but she's also getting food and taking that to her community, which is outside of the wall of the luxury kind of, I would say, well off part of the small town community. And she's outside of the wall. And this is where like the ghetto, the slums are. And she's all about helping her fellow man. And Paul being a former chiropractor kind of gets on board with that. And, I guess it's, it's a feel-good movie. It's just... It, it ends up on a good note yeah. at the end. So I just feel kind it of... It felt long to me. Yeah. And a little bit dragged out at points, but that was strange. It was weird. So is Alexander sometimes. And, I mean, I get... Also, there's a lot of backlash about Hong Chao's character seemed kind of racist and stereotypical. It's like I, I kind of see where they're coming from on that because she's kind of... Not one note, but kind of repetitive and... I don't know if she was played intentionally for laughs or not, but there's a couple smile grimaces for me watching her and her performance, her role. And, but all, all in all, everyone did well. And I say if you have time and you want to watch it, I would say on a rainy day you could. It's not something you should run out and go see because it's a pain movie. But if What you would you recommend instead? Huh. Out of his canon? Or yeah. just... I would probably say See the Descendants or Election. Those are feel good movies. I yeah. saw The Descendants. 
I watched The Descendants again. I watched Nebraska. I watched. You can't. I couldn't. I couldn't watch. I've seen about Schmidt. Good movie. And I will talk about that one later. We will. Oh. Um, my recommendation list will be short, even though I saw a bunch of things that I would highly recommend. I'll talk about those later. Um, I'm just going to talk about the newest M. Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan. Shyamalan movie, um, Glass. Um, the final book in our unexpected trilogy that we didn't even know that existed two years ago. Um, you know, for those not familiar, it started out with a movie called Unbreakable back in 2001 or 2000. Um, right in the first little superhero uh, boom was winding down. Um, M. Night, this was, I believe, his second outing after Sixth Sense. 2000. Um, and it starred... Uh, Bruce Willis, Sam Jackson, and... Am I forgetting anyone else? I think those are two names that we... The little kid. <laughs> I can't remember yeah, the little kid's yeah, name. Yeah. Um, um, but it introduced us to these two characters of... Um, a guy who had later known as Mr. Glass and um, Bruce Willis's character who would basically become the theme of the movie, The Unbreakable, um, who gets into a train accident and he's the only survivor to walk away. And we find out that Glass was actually the one who um, orchestrated all that, orchestrated the crashing of the train. So skip forward to... So 2016, 2017, out comes a movie from him called Split, Split starring. I'm just letting Anthony answer all the starring <laughs> things he's sitting here with Sorry. a computer. So that's uh, McAvoy, James McAvoy from X-Men. Sorry. James McAvoy. From X-Men. Okay. Yeah, he's Professor X. I know. I had to. Sorry. <laughs> he's in other things too. Yeah, but he's really good as Professor X. Another drink. Take another drink. Professor X. We have a drinking game. Professor X. Every time you bring Anywho, up a super- um, so we get Split, a Tone fantastic um, movie that at the end of the movie gives us a nice little end scene of- David Dunn. David Bruce Dunn, Bruce Willis, sitting at a bar drinking, and all of a sudden everybody who stayed through and realized that Split is the connection of the Unbreakable Universe almost 16 years later- um, and we find out that we were going to get the glass. And so glass just came out and it was interesting. Um, I heard it was, I thought it was a good wrap up of the series. Um, it didn't put superheroes in your normal light. Um, it was really grounded in the way of, Hey, what if these people, do they really think that they... Psychology? Yeah. Is it a psychology? Is it something that they think they're doing? Something that they have? Or do they really have these things? And it plays really well about halfway through the movie because it gets Bruce Willis' character really thinking about, huh, did I... Am I am I making these things up or these meaning? And... It worked to the effect of that he kind of started doubting that he had abilities. And so then when Mr. Glass kind of put everything into play for the final act um, by breaking out um, James McAvoy's character, the, the Beast, beast. Um, the whore. Um, Dave, David was left in his cell, unable to get out. And so Glass shut off the water, which was holding him in because that's one of his weaknesses, um, quote unquote. And all that was holding him in was a big giant steel door. And so it was David's breaking point of, is this real or is this something mental? And he was settling on it was mental. And then he realized what Mr. Glass had in store. And all of a sudden the abilities come back and he busts out of the door and they have this fantastic showdown. Is there an actress in this movie? Yes, it was um, Sarah Paulson. Sarah Paulson from American Horror Story. Okay, right. Um, Good actress. She. She's the psychiatrist. And she has a time limit, correct? So is there a time limit? Is it just three days? Three days to, yeah. to prove to prove to them that it it's their mental state, not that they actually have abilities. Interesting. Um, and if you're still listening now, I am going to spoil this, and I don't care about spoiling it. Ding ding. But who cares? It's a it's an M Night Shyamalan movie, so there's always going to be something at the end of the, right. the movie. So you have your warning. Did you watch um, it? I read the screenplay. So 
we go into this nice big outdoor right, fight right in front of the psychiatric building. So we have the girl from uh, Split that Anna he Tyler. took us hostage. Yep. Um, she's worked into this. The mother from Glass or from Unbreakable, the mother um, mm-hmm. of Mr. Glass, she's in it. And the son, who is Bruce Willis, the son in in the original Unbreakable, is here in it as well. Mm-hmm. So they've worked all three of them in it. And everything that Mr. Glass has done has been playing up to the scene. And you have the three of them who are all associated with the three that have the abilities all coming together and putting things together. And it was really interesting to see like they're the girl who is, um, uh, captured, um, by the beast and Casey and the horde. Um, how she took it to a level of that. She recognized that it was more than just a mental instability that she could play with, not play with, um, get to the heart of who he was. And she kept trying to tap into that because every time she did, it broke the beast and it broke the horde and he was a normal person and she was trying to hold him to that point. And so you have the, the three of them and you have the other three with the abilities all sitting here in front of the psychiatric building and everything being laid out. Um, and hmm. they all die. They do. Except for the three that are all associated with the abilities. They all die. And we find out that their abilities was, I told you I was going to do spoilers. I do spoilers on this podcast. I don't care. It's okay. <laughs> um, as as things are happening, if you're watching closely, all of a sudden you see a clover tattoo on the people that are coming in to break up the fight. And then you see the clover tattoo on Sarah Paulson and you realize that this is all part of a bigger organization. And she had three days because what they were trying to do is something that they repetitively have done throughout history is every time a good person rises, an evil person rises. And they come in as a organization and tamp down those before it gets out into the thing. And basically for civiliz- or for centuries, there was always people with powers and this is how it always happens. And the kicker was that they re- the three of them, uh, or Mr. Glass sent all of the recordings of all the videos of the fight and all the abilities to um, his wife and the other two, Casey and uh, the son. And they ended up sharing it with YouTube. So it went into social media. So now the organization is out there. Everybody knows about the organization and knows about the abilities. And that's how the movie ends. Well, okay. So one good person, which would be Bruce. Bruce David. was the good. Yeah. Who's the bad then? The glass. Good, that was glass. And the the beast, was, beast was an abnormality because oh, okay. they really just, they talked about how whenever there's good, there always also is an evil. And they said, they have to stamp this down before it starts spreading, basically. So, so I don't know if... What the heck was Split about? Anyway. Split was... He was both. Okay. Basically, it's, Glass he had, triggered... He had both evil and good okay. and in him. But Glass, the the other little spoiler in there was that um, the Beast's father was on the train that crashed at the, the that Bruce survived. Right. So... There was the turn of him being a bad Snap. into good. Yeah. But if you like glass movies, go see it. Or if you like glass movies, M. if you like M. Night movies, hmm. go see it. Um, I think it was good for him to have a, a win. Yeah. You know, not everybody out there saying it was a good movie, but I think in terms of his pedigree of the, the movies he's done, it's a win. I think it's a good movie. I was secretly hoping that somehow we'd learn that the sixth sense was actually part of this as well. <laughs> that all of a sudden he starts seeing dead people <laughs> at the end. Could be too much. But um, it was interesting. They had some unused footage from Unbreakable. Okay. So they threw that in there. A couple scenes with Bruce on the train, okay. um, him talking to his young son. And I think that kind of made it a little bit more powerful that they actually had the same actor. Right. And that they were able to have that unseen footage that you haven't seen of that same actor when he was young, hmm. because it made it's like this is a pretty cool flashback. Because usually when you see flashbacks, it's a completely different actor right. just to make the kid young. But you had that footage from the kid when sixteen years ago, so or eighteen years ago. 
Um, so yeah, go see it before it leaves theater. I think it's a good one to see in the theater. Um, Box set. Max McAvoy is <laughs> on top of his game. I think he he handles the like jumping in and out of personalities. I think it had to have been really fun for him to do that. Stressful, but fun, yeah. Yeah. I still laugh at the McAvoy story of how he ended up with a bald head. <laughs> I don't know it. So here we go. Get ready to drink again. <laughs> okay. So he learned that he was doing, um, he got cast as Professor X. Well, everybody knows Professor X doesn't have any hair. So his view of Professor X was with no hair. So he shaved his hair and said, I'm ready for, ready for it. Well, they were doing an early version of Professor X. Right. So he needed hair. So he had to wear a wig all the way up. But at the same time is when they were filming Split. So he went right into having bald, and it actually worked for the character, for Jane McAvoy character to be bald. Very strange. So. <laughs> Why you ask before you do. Yeah. And right. I, I really can't, like, think of, like, how would Split... So I don't know if Split would have come off with hair. It wouldn't work. It no. would have been weird. Yeah. So it was just, it was like a happy accident that happened. I think happened, the baldness kind of added like the empty palette to him switching characters. So the hair would have been more distracting. So. Yeah, his, his jumping back and forth into the, the lead, um, the leader of the horde, the the woman yeah. that was the priestess or whatever she was. I think it was pretty cool. You just all of a sudden, you just see all of his just mannerisms just completely go. The Beast is kind of a little bit overboard for right. me, but I think like all of his other little, like he jumps back into the 11-year-old boy's body is really cool. I, th- I think just the back and forth, and it's like, I enjoyed it. Okay. Valerie is looking. She needs to get, we need to get her to see more. She's looking off into the... Uh, Noster, I so. chocolate. I just think it's pretty cool because like in terms of a superhero movie, it's not a superhero movie, okay. but it is as close to like thinking of like humans getting those abilities Mm -hmm. and what would actually happen. So, all right. Well, with that, we're going to take a short break and we will be right back. For you, the listeners of the Cultural Stew podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. And this week, again, my friend Leslie Plesser, who always gives me such great uh, books to read um, or listen to, actually. I am listening to Virgil Wander by Leif Anker. And it's about um, a man who drives his car off. Well, we don't know what happens, but his car ends up going off of a bridge into Lake Superior. He is, I mean, it's kind of a miracle that he is saved. Um, it's a miracle that somebody's even out there. It's kind of a mystery in a way, um, but he ends up with amnesia. So he's piecing together his life. Uh, he owns a the movie theater in town, which is kind of, that whole thing is a thing in itself. It's kind of cool. There's also um, the story of a missing, uh, a man who goes missing who was a, um, a big sports star in town. And it's just the way he starts piecing all these things together and the man who's missing, the father shows up and that type of, in his personality and who he is, the whole thing is extremely well written. Um, it is very smart. It um, moves along well. It's calming also, too. It's not something that is going to bother you. It's not something that's, I don't know, I find it very enjoyable to listen to. So, um, narrator is good. Yeah. Fantastic. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit of a mystery, I have not finished it. So I don't know what is in store for me. I've but, been um I've been caught up in the I downloaded this a while ago and I just started listening to it, the Sherlock Holmes collection. Mm-hmm. Uh, narrated by Stephen Fry. Mm-hmm. I've really been enjoying it. Like 
I've watched all like the different variations of Sherlock Holmes, but I never went back to the source material to mm-hmm. actually like listen to it. And it's it's really great, especially in terms of like um, the Sherlock uh, BBC. Um, all everything that they've pulled from those books to put into those movies and modernize it, and it just it kind of it's really cool. Just like you kind of get the like, Lula, that's really. Um, so that's where I've been lately. And then after I finish that, I'm going back and f- looking at the. Um, I was doing the Jack Reacher series, so I'm on book three of the Jack Reacher series. Are you enjoying that? I am. I mean, I I just kind of wanted to get to know the Jack Reacher character a little bit because there was a little bit of controversy in the casting of the movie, and it was also revealed that the um the author is making a series hmm. in either Amazon or Netflix, and they're going to recast. So it's going to, they're going to recast somebody that's more closer to what the Jack Reacher character is, who's supposed to be like a six foot two, six foot, like really big guy, two hundred and thirty pound big they, guy. There's from they have permission to do that. It's the author. I know, but usually the author has the rights removed, or they sell their rights to. I don't think the author sold his rights. I think he leased them out to make <laughs> smart, the movie. Smart, smart. Interesting. But, I also. Um, I've been listening. So I listen to books sometimes simultaneously um, because some books are heavier and so I can only listen to for. Um, but I'm listening to A Writer's Diary um, by Virginia Woolf. Uh, it's narrated by Susan Erickson. It's really good. But I mean, just because I like to listen to books about writers, um, and the way that she wrote her diary and the way she goes about talking about her writing in her diary and the struggles that she has. So if you're into Virginia Woolf, I would recommend that as well. Are you afraid of Virginia Woolf? I am not, okay. but that movie is so, a good one. Audible has tons of different things for anything that you're looking for. And where can they go to find it? You can go to audibletrial.com slash cultural stew and you will get a free book, free month. Go there. I mean, you get more than just a free book now. You also get three picks from their, you get uh, three picks from their magical, wonderful six picks a month. That's true. I, I actually forgot about that because that's kind of a new thing that they started doing. Yes. And I think that's where I got the Sherlock Holmes series that I said I just started. I think that was from there. And I got some plays from there. I forgot about that. That's actually pretty cool. I mean, because you do get now up to four books if you want them. I'd like to see them expand their picks to like a dozen, give you a little bit more variety. Um, Because I I found the last couple months it hasn't been like, mm, I'm kind of on the fence whether I want to grab something but still i've always found something to grab though yeah so that's cool but yeah i mean i feel like it is still worth it so go to audibletrial.com slash cultural stew get your one two possibly four books (laughs) Um, all for a free trial i mean you don't have to give anything back you don't do anything and you cancel any time uh and they have kids' books and makes everything go faster. But did you also know that if you subscribe, you also support us at the same time? See, now that's the way, that's why you should really do it. Yeah. <laughs> we love our sponsors. We love anybody who wants to help us out. So where can we go again? Audibletrial.com slash cultural studio. <laughs> And welcome back. And today's stew is brought to you by Tony. Hi. So, today we're talking about the great Alexander Payne, or Constantine Alexander Papadopoulos. His grandfather changed the name to Payne because Papadopoulos sounded a little weird in the 1930s, 40s, Omaha, Nebraska. Um, so... Alexander has done a whole slew of films, not a lot, a lot, but enough where he has a following. He's won two Academy Awards for Best Screenplay. Um, he rarely ever does original screenplays, so he's won Best Screenplay for The Descendants and for Sideways. And I'll tell you something he didn't win a Best Screenplay for, 
something I have a bone to pick for him, and that's Jurassic Park 3. I keep forgetting he and Jim wrote that. Yeah. But I have a better story. Listening. What's your story? Okay. So, uh, speaking of the birthday boy, uh, who was actually born in 1941, uh, when he was nine years old, he went to see uh, Winchester 73. So that happened in 1950. And the director was Anthony Mann. Um, The starting of the movie, I just noticed, was really gorgeous. So I watched the movie. I was like, okay, I I enjoyed it. Um, My father bought, uh, after searching for a very long time, a Winchester 73 gun. Mm -hmm. And he hung it up. And I mean, it's kind of a cool story, but I won't go into the whole thing here. It's one of my favorite looking guns. Really? Yeah. I'm not a, a huge gun guy, but that would, if I had that, it would be hanging over a fireplace that I don't have. It's beautiful. <laughs> and then I found some <clears throat> coins and I sent them to him. Um, and I found actually an outtake picture. Um, it, stars, it stars Jimmy Stewart. Um, it has actually a twist. It was really good. So it's beautifully shot. It's black and white even. But um, I was watching, trying to learn about Anthony, or sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry trying to learn about Alexander Payne. So I was watching um, an interview that he did on HBO or something. Uh, on HBO, a guy was giving it. Um, <laughs> and it was back and forth. And he was talking about Westerns that he enjoyed and the fact that um, he like I didn't know that that Anthony, Payne, Anthony Mann was the director of Winchester 73. But when he mentioned the fact that he had loved these westerns and he loved the backgrounds and he loved the settings which Payne is known for um he loves the settings of his movies they're beautiful um and he mentions these old westerns with Jimmy Stewart I was like wait a minute here and I look back and I see that it's the same dream director that he loves and I just happened to have watched it two days before it was just really a cool thing. So I called my dad and told him that it all worked out for my podcast. But um, kind of cool. I'm sorry. It was I, I thought it was a cool little That's circular story. And, you know, he said something about um, that he had waited, what did he say, 68 years or something. Um, and he finally got his gun and he had a picture of it mounted. Yeah. So pretty cool. Cool little, cool little story and actually a beautiful movie. So there you go. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> it sounds. So question. When you think of an Alexander Payne film, what do you think of? What pops in your head first? Quirky. Define quirky for me, for you. They're just a little bit abnormal. Um, they take a character that is normal but has some funky... Um, and the word's not coming out. You know, like you think about Schmidt, and you basically have a guy that, um, he's, yeah. you know, he kind of yeah. goes a little bit nutso there. Yeah. You have uh, downsizing where it's quirky in the way of, um, you know, we're we're talking about shrinking people, right? Um, you have that has a me- I mean, there's lots of excuse me messages there. I mean, yeah, there's trying, messages there, but dealing. he does he does it with like. He doesn't put it in a, in a normal setting to tell that story. He kind of gives it a little bit of a Heightened. a twist. Like, I don't know. I, just the ones that I've seen, they just kind of. It's a movie about how people They can stand save out money. to me because they're just a little bit Quirk. different. Yeah. But yet the, but yet the movie costs a ton of money. <laughs> I just think that's funny. Um, what do I think of? I think of. Because I, my favorite, my favorite is Sideways. I own Sideways. I enjoy that movie. I watch The Descendants again. Um, It's not something I would own, but I liked it. But I think of, I think of characters that need help. But, um, I mean... At the end, I think they come to a realization about themselves, about the situation that they're in, um, after going on a journey. I guess that's kind of how I see it. 
Okay. And Nebraska was hard for me to watch. He is definitely somebody who focuses on relationships. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I guess that's why, you know, I like his, I, his characters for me are always not larger than life, but kind of that they're us, but at a little titch higher scale. But so, they're believable. Yeah. They're, they're every man, <laughs> every woman, but just a titch higher. Circumstances make them make it more elevated and heightened experience for everyone. Um, the descendants, m- w- sorry, a man finds out his wife's cheating when she's on her deathbed and he goes on a road trip with this girl to find her lover and do whatever he plans on doing. And the book is more in detail than that, but he's going to go out and get revenge as well as tell his family that we're not selling the land to this company because we can get more money for it. So well, it's that he, well, duality. He, he's the descendant yeah. of... One of many, but yeah. Of Hawaii, like of of land in Hawaii that they're going to sell. And the they trust. decide not to. But. It's um I always find interesting that his characters are always his main the main protagonists are always have something to lose and they usually do lose that. Mm-hmm. And then somehow But they gain something too. They gain something. I mean even in election, Tracy loses, but then she gains some kind of clarity, but then she gets it right back again. You know, not the clarity but the winning. So that movie uh was one that seemed different than the others. Can you explain why? It's so quirky. I don't know if it's because Reese Witherspoon did such a fantastic job or because it's so uncomfortable why are you to uncom- watch. I don't know. They are. That is a crazy movie. I mean, I just remember. It's just, it's intense. Reese is... She is unstoppable. She is, I, I mean, if you want to see Reese really act, I really think he's not around the movie. same time as um, 1999. Wes Anderson's, uh, was he Royal Tenet Moms? No, or it was the other Rushmore, Rushmore, yes. And so, I always had these two back and forth in my head as to like. Which one belongs to what film? Because I really didn't pay much attention to either of them back then. But I know they were both quirky and both dealt with very, high school. And I find Rushmore more quirky. And I oh, guess yeah, it's, definitely, Murray, it's definitely more quirky. Bill is just. But Election Night was, if you look at all of his Andrew Payne stuff, it's definitely the one that he went away from that a little bit. Right. Did you like Tracy in that film at all? Or was she likable to you? Or just. Did you know a Tracy in high school? No, I did not. No, Tracy. I wasn't in that group. Okay. It's not, yeah. Did I like her? The character? <sighs> mm-hmm. I, I liked the fact that she was, she had a goal, she was fixed on it, and she went for it. I will say, I, I I will applaud her for that. Okay. So, you said you like Sideways. What about Sideways pulled you into that? I'm just curious. Like, was Miles that entertaining to you, or was it more? It was very um, funny. It was very. Um, I don't know. I watched that movie, and then uh, I think it's very, <laughs> um, so well written and his his meaning I'm sorry hold on one second what give me his name Paul Giamatti yes um and I'm not a huge I'm not really even a huge fan of his really okay guys I'm sorry I'm not wow I really wasn't at the time what I'm saying is I really wasn't at the time okay so I watched this movie and he's so funny I mean, but I, I mean, it's quotable. That's what I love. I love the, it's quote, it's quotable. I mean, the whole thing about not drinking Merlot and him absolutely going berserko in that, in that wine tasting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I laughed so hard. Um, there's moment, there are moments in that movie that are so funny. Um, I also think it's tender. I really love um, his love interest character. Virginia. Virginia Madison. Virginia. Is that right? Yeah. Um, She's lovely. And 
I love what she brings out in him. I, I really, um, I just, the characters are very well developed and they do show a lot of beauty in the movie. There's a lot of scenery and I've, yeah, in my vision, it's a beautiful movie just to watch and it makes me laugh. So, and very few things make me laugh. Okay. So, um, that's what I enjoyed about it. I saw um, about Schmidt. It was in 2002. And it had been probably four, wait, it was 2002. It was about seven years, six or seven years since I had lost my grandparents. So it had been some time, but there's a moment. And I haven't seen about Schmidt since then because I couldn't. I couldn't watch it for some reason. Uh Um, But there's a moment Mm -hmm. where he puts on, his wife passes away in the movie. Uh, Although he, he, like he kind of says she's painting his ass in a way, but he puts on her night cream in the mirror. I cried like a baby. It's just that moment of him missing her. And putting on her night cream, smelling the night cream, feeling what she felt. I don't know. I thought it was really beautiful. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. And I just cried. The man can pull some emotions out. And his casting of the daughter, who became big, but the daughter in The Descendants, or, yeah, The Descendants, um, she was a force. I thought she was fantastic. And just having that whole thing where he is heartbroken and she, uh, his wife having this accident who is in a coma and she thinks, and she was going to leave him for this man who she loved and she didn't know that he didn't love her the same way was heartbreaking in a way and I just I loved watching him bond with his children because the fact that he didn't know much about them at all right I I don't know there was something about that whole thing I really enjoyed that watching that develop well alexander has a lot of heart in his films like you said he also likes basing his characters in the circumstances that we all face but he wants them to you know like i the whole theme of this is lose something lose themselves lose something they value and then either get it back or rise above it even in downsizing i mean matt damon's wife practically leaves him uh, and <laughs> literally leaves him no literally, yeah literally <laughs> she even gets her head shaved yeah. and then leaves him yeah I didn't see that movie. Can we spoil it for you, or do you want to? No, you can spoil it because okay. I, 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 it just wasn't interested. It's just why I mean I wasn't at first either, but then I heard Christoph Waltz was in it instead of. Um, um, Does it Sasha. have heart to it? There is some. It tries. Yeah, it's not natural like his other films. But so like election didn't. Have there's redemption heart. for Matt. Yeah, I think that's the the heart of it. I like his movies with more heart. So. Um, it's just uh, it's the jarring Christian scene is just he's already been shaven he's already out, laid out he's already shrunken and he gets a phone call because the wife's supposed to be there and then he's like answering the phone and the classic Matt Damon he's listening but you see his, his whole body tensing and then Christian's on the phone at it, wherever she is and she's bald has a hood over her head and she's like honey don't she's be at the, mad she's at the train station <laughs> yeah, she's like, she honey don't some, be like, mad taking off don't be mad, but I can't be there and blah, blah, blah. And then he just like loses it. He just starts swearing and just, yeah. But that's when, again, it's the whole Matt Damon thing. I'm seeing Matt Damon, not Paul, who he's playing. But Because mm-hmm. Matt Damon has that, every time he's in a film, he always has that hothead, that anger comes out. And But like Ron said, it's not really a typical pain film. It feels kind of jarring in a way, that whole like, it's not even a sci-fi element of it. It's just the fact that this is really a satire, but it has. Yes. And it kind of slapped me in the face a couple of times, kind of like Matt Damon's other film, Promised Land with John Krasinski and Francis McDormand. So, um. He's trying to, he, he's trying to, 
He's having a message here. It's kind of like five years old, though. That's the thing. This film was written five or six years ago, and he finally got to make it the last two years ago. So it's, it's kind of outdated, but not really. And it's still has a message. Yeah, it's still. I I think that that's why he did it. You should um, watch it though. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. I I listened to a uh, podcast about it so that I would actually know kind of what was going on in his head when he was making it and etc. And so I um I know that he. Was trying to make a point. Yeah. But um, the fact that he spent so much money on it is ironic. So, Ron, do you enjoy his films? I'm just curious, like, would you see another one or is it something you have to hear about and then you're like, eh? I, I don't think I've watched any of his films more than once. Okay. But you do that with films in general, you only watch once unless they're really like, you have to. Yeah. I mean, that is a general thing, but. To me, most of his movies have been forgettable, except for, I think, Sideways okay. was one that it stuck in an about Schmidt. Okay. And it maybe because I was invested in films a little bit differently okay. when those two came around. Right. Um, you know, I was how I loved Paul Giamatti at the time. I, you know, his American Splendor and Good I movie. think was it super sizing or no storytelling. Um, he had just started to like okay. kind of break out into becoming like the guy yeah. um, who does really good acting and he's a really good actor in it. And that is the thing that stands out to me from that film was his great acting. And uh, the one who got, I think he won supporting actor for it. Uh, the other guy, Thomas from wings. Yeah. Thomas Hayden church, Thomas Hayden church. <laughs> and, um, Sorry. but, and then about Schmidt, all I rem- like I said, what I remember from that film is the it's quirky Jack Nicholson Hope Davis. with some funny stuff that happens. Yeah. Um, but I'm, you know, you get drawn in towards the relationship stuff. I just to me, most of it has been forgettable. I think okay. Nebraska, the black and white uh, treatment of Nebraska was phenomenal. You know, but the story was right. not one that I was invested in. It was you hard. Know, um, it was a hard story. Yeah, and it uh, was it Bruce Bruce Dern, right? Yeah, right. and watching them drive yeah. through that stuff that I've driven through my entire life. Yeah, but and then you have Bruce, who's kind of kind of losing it, right. and it's just I I was hoping downsizing would be something different. I honestly I didn't realize that it was an Alexander Payne film until after. <laughs> okay, so it was kind of like. Oh, I wasn't looking towards the relationship part of it, and so I was looking more of it as like this was a funny comedy thing with Kirsten Wig and Matt Damon, and it right. let's see how this goes. And it took a completely different turn that it wasn't really a comedy. Did it feel like two different movies to you? Because it felt like two yeah. different movies to me. It the, it was everything before he met um, Hong's character. Um, yeah, and what she needed right. and where that went from there, and then it turned into a survival right. Like, flick and it was yeah. like okay <laughs> right so yeah i i can come or go with his films i mean there's not anything that stands out that say hey this right. is the best film i've ever seen it's right. gonna be put in there it's like entertaining yeah i, I see that uh when i saw the descendants i watched it um this week seeing it as a parent was different uh so i felt more for it okay and i uh, enjoyed it more than i did the first time i saw it um and them dealing with their grief right. of losing their mother plus having their anger and um his grief and anger i don't know i felt it more um that uh being said sideways i probably watch once a year i own that movie i watch it twice a year but yeah i watch it maybe three times sometimes okay you gonna go for four? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I watch I no. I watch most of his films at least once a year, but Sideways is in my heart for at least twice. I, so. Yeah, I at least at least watch it at least once um, because it it makes me laugh. I like it, enjoy it. But the other movies, uh, Election and uh, Citizen Ruth, and I didn't like Ruth. I had never heard Citizen Ruth. That's the I first seen film. That one. Ninety one. It's on YouTube. It's, <clears throat> Sorry. It's a very. Uh, it's interesting because he uses Laura Dern. Uh, is like she's very very young, and then he uses Bruce Dern later on. It's kind of cool. Um, but I would agree. I would say that his movies for me are 
most of them are are ones I'm going to watch again. About Schmidt had that moment, and I'd like to see it again, but I can't get right. it somewhere for some reason. Um, Library. But I oh okay. But I watched the preview for it, and it looked. It focuses on the comedy, doesn't it? It does. Yes, the, the trailer the does. Yeah, and not so much about like the I'm not basis sure for it. if I wanted to see it again. Yeah. So I think he got nominated for that. No, Jack got nominated. Yes, but yeah, not, yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's what I was referring to as Jack. So. so there you go. That's how I feel. Okay, but I feel like he's interesting, and he's definitely worth um, watching his movies. Oh, his birthday passed on the ten. So happy birthday, Alexander! Oh, true. So, yeah, no. I would. I would definitely say if you like relationship. No, his birthday is February. That 10. study is relationships, it? and then he's definitely yeah. Right. It's February tenth. Well, I know, but I'll be, I'm just pre. You know, I'm doing that whole flash forward thing, the future. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, Sorry. I do silly he, It's gonna yeah. be. 58. We'll be recording on the tenth. <laughs> yeah. There you go. He'll be fifty-eight. So. I he, has a, he has a kid. So. So. Yes. Okay. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about Payne. He's one of my favorite directors, along with uh, Sarah Polly in Canada. So I'll be mentioning her a lot probably this year. So, so what in particular can I ask you just like in a short two sentence thing? Why in particular you like him? Um, I think it's just his, I like human characters. So I think the fact that he writes real, about real people and their real struggles is what okay. allows me to watch mm-hmm. or anything else. And there's a little zip of natural human comedy that I like in it. So it's not like force it's like really natural. This is what it really had to happen to you or someone else. And like, um, quickly election in the backyard you know matthew broderick's character you know steps on a a, a hoe and gets slapped in the face with it and then a bee slaps his face gets stung by a bee it's that slight physical natural comedy i like not the whole overboard stuff so natural in your world world environment humor so so sideways is your favorite i think so yeah, yeah. Would be. okay all righty awesome well our next show our stew is going to be presented by valerie it is, and I have decided. Sorry. I have my notes. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that you're going to, I, I think you'll have some uh, good input on this. And I would like to hear some movies that maybe you would actually in, um, put into here. I just kind of did it at the top of my head, but I, um, films depicting famous writers or the writing life. Ooh. Um, because. Beach I, Bum is about a writer. Adaptation, too. That's true. I mean, yes. I mean, I yeah. just kind of went off the top of my head. I have um, Wonder Boys, which I, I love that movie. I just do. Um, and The Hours and Swimming Pool. That's a little bizarre. You have Shakespeare and Love on there. Right. There's a lot that I have on there. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's, yes, Shakespeare and Love is in my head. Dustin, yes. I it, like I that movie. It's, it's Dustin's favorite movie. <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed that movie. It's so, so smart. But anyway, um, there are a lot of movies that we can cover. So I think that'll be very interesting. I love watching movies about Capote. writers. Good movie. That would be considered one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to do women writers oh. only, mm-hmm. but then I decided, no. I, there are so many movies that I like that have um, men <coughs> men's writers and, and it really opens it up. So writing from both i've seen the hours i think i've seen wonder I boys seen, I, seen I don't remember movie. swimming pool that's that is a very swimming pool is a very uh <laughs> independent movie that has very like like not very many people have seen it i have who's it about it has um Who's the woman that is, I adore, she's the queen, and you always talk about how she's naked and everything. You're talking about... Um, Claire Foy? Helen Mirren. Oh, Helen Mirren. <laughs> yeah. I believe it's Helen Mirren in this movie, I want to say. But I think you should watch it. Well, who, who is it about? Helen Mirren. It's about her writing a book. So it's an autobiography mm-hmm. film? No, 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 no. It's This is a fiction. Okay. 
This is not nonfiction. Oh, okay. Not about it. So this is, yeah, this is like, well, like Wonder Boys is not But about. The Hours is based on... Yes, Rangers, right? okay. that's correct. The Hours okay. is based on Virginia Woolf. But what I'm saying is um, there's a Plath movie with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. I mean, there's lots of biopics, but this one is fiction. This one's actually uh, got a cool little thing to it. I was just, because you said depicting famous writers, so I thought it had to be. No, or the writing were... life. Okay. Or okay. the writing life. Cool. So it, fiction or nonfiction, okay. it doesn't matter. Just about the writing life. I just find interesting. All so, right. There you go. <coughs> Let's reach into our grab bag and wrap up the show pretty quickly here. Um, Kids Corner. Kids Corner. Where in the world? It's Carmen San Diego. My children started watching it. Uh, Zoe liked it. It's rated YZ. Uh, YZ. Um, and then last night, the girls and Jason and I watched Wally from 2008. Uh, they struggled with that. They went up and down, but I think they're very tired. Um, hmm. And we hadn't seen it for a long time. Jason and I went to go see it uh, before kids, obviously, 2008. Um, good movie. Again, about the environment. Wow. Yeah, it's got a very strong... Oh my gosh. Topical thing at the end with the, and the people. The people Jason on their phones. Talks about the people. It's, yeah. The, on their phones, they're looking at a screen the entire time. And then when eating they, food. And they eat food. They can't walk. They can't dance. They can't do anything because they're sitting down all the time. Jason, we talk about this all the time. He's like, oh my gosh, it's Wally. We're going to have a Wally issue. Yep. Um, and the fact that somebody dropped their phone or whatever, he looks over and sees a woman a real person and they make eye contact for the first time. And he's just like, <gasps> and they both kind of, I mean, these people don't even look at each other. They're all looking at their phones. It's crazy. And this was in 2008, which means it started writing about 2004, 2005. It's very, so. very smart. I definitely think it's worth a watch. Um, and the other thing we got book of the week. Okay, so I read this slap. It's based. Uh, Sounds like a hockey book. I know it wasn't though. Um, it, the slap is a Australian novel written by Christos Tsakas. He's Greek. Sorry, I mispronounced the name. Um, basically, in short, it's a story about a adult man who's at a barbecue with his friends and family, and he slaps one of his friends' child because the kid is being aggressive with another child. Um, the Americans. Sorry, I'm American. Um, America made a remake of it and it wasn't so good but the Australian one is good there's a movie there's a right yeah okay. don't watch the American one it's not good the uh, British one I watched it or British Australian production is uh, very good and very very smart very and yeah it is very interesting in short uh, the slap is written in a style of um, first person narrative so each of the chapters is taken from the point of view of one of the individuals who was at the party and how it affects their personal life, social life, and their friendship with the slapper. It's so, cool. pretty good. Pretty entertaining. <laughs> do not watch the American version. Even though Zach Quindle's in it, do not watch the American. Find the Australian one. It's on Daily Emotion and YouTube. And, yeah. I'm done with that. Okay. I didn't know there was an Australian one. I did watch the American one. So, let's wrap up our show with what's on our radar, what's in our queue. I, had, like I said, I saw Glass. I... Also saw S Into the Spider-Verse, um, really liked it. Um, from an art perspective, I liked their usage of 3D with throwing on the 2D comic book effect on top of it. Um, it's a trip. It's really well done um, and among the best Spider-Man movies um, out there. Um, also, Punisher Season 2 released right around, uh, what was that, last weekend? I think so. 15th. Um, pretty strong for the most part of the season. Um, unfortunately, I just don't know where it's going to go after now. Um, uh, Don Bernthal said there's going to be more Punisher, but I don't know what that means because <laughs> pretty sure nothing else Marvel is going to be made at Netflix after Jessica Jones comes out, which my guess is going to be March. Yeah. Um, also saw the first man. Um, I liked it I a did. lot. I watched it too. Um, we watched, rented it last night. I liked what Damien Chazelle did with the, it was almost a cross process look over okay. everything. So it was 
gave it that 60s, 70s, almost like a home video type vibe okay. in the colorization of everything, which kind of grounded everything. So you weren't looking at everything in like nowadays colors, Dark. Um, which makes me think he, he added a lot of cross dissolve or cross processing on it okay. because it was very, very blue, very orange. Yes. Those were his primary colors. They stuck out everywhere to me. Yes. And then when you get up to the moon, everything is just black and white except for his mask and like the little bit of hint of the blue. And I was like, this, he's very smart as to how he uses his colors throughout this film. I also was very emotional. Yeah. I was very yeah. vocal during this movie. I was freaking out. I'm like, oh my God. You're like, you're, this, it was, you guys are I'm guys glad are they showed the Claire Foy, um, the, his wife in that, um, Armstrong's wife. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole scene with her like breaking down. Um, no, you're going to tell your kids that you may never be coming back. It was yeah. like, oh, fuck. And it's like things you don't think about. You know, I grew up thinking, you know, hey, we touched the moon. You, all these like things you don't think about. And then the, the we have the movie. Lose. The friends right. they lose. Just like, what? bam, my God. It was heartbreaking. I thought it was heartbreaking. Yeah. Jason sits down and he's going to watch it. He's like, oh, we're watching First Man. He's like, who's it? Oh, it's Ryan Gosling. Is that why we're watching? You know what, though? Gosling was actually really good, and he disappeared into the role. I did not see Gosling the whole movie. I neither. I thought he was great. It was a good movie. So Yeah, I highly recommend The First Man. It didn't get a, it only get four. Did yes. he get a Best Director award for nom it. for that? Um, No. Hmm. So if you're not familiar with Damon Chazelle, he's also the guy who's behind La La Land, which also had Ryan Gosling in it. Um, and was completely different as you can get from this. And First Man was awesome because they actually got to use, like, they filmed at NASA. So they, like, got on location for a majority of the movie. Yeah, it's like sound editing. The sound was great. Oh, I had the Atmos speakers and everything full blast watching it, shaking the house. Sound mixing, stuff yeah. like that. It, that will easily be my pick for the win on that one because it was so good. Um, YouTube uh, caught a series called Wayne. A little interesting. Um, kind of on the fence about it. Uh, Netflix came out with Sex Education. Um, I liked it. My wife sat there and, you know, she actually watched it with me. And it was just funny. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, um, what's her name? Mm-hmm. Uh, from X-Files. Uh, Jillian. Jillian Anderson is just Phenomenal, and I loved watching her just be so loosey goosey and completely like any other character I've watched her play. It was fantastic, and how she dealt with her son Otis, I was like, "This is just awesome." Yeah. So I love her. I kind of. So I'm like, I'm with, I'm ready for a season two now to see like, okay, now where do we go with oh, this? They're going to do season two. I hope so. I mean, they they started them at 16, which if you're going to start a series with kids, yeah. they typically start them in the a grade so you can actually follow them for a couple of years. Okay. It's just kind of something I've noticed that every time we have something about somebody in school, it usually starts with their freshman or sophomore year. Okay. Um, so nothing else much on mine except for catching up on a lot of stuff. See, uh, True Detective season three started with uh, Marsha, Marsala, Mahershala. Mahershala Ali in it. Um, first episode was pretty good. So I'm looking forward to going through and catching up with the rest. Okay, we'll go. I saw Ben is back. I thought Joey Roberts was fantastic, and I am shocked that she did not get a nomination. I really enjoyed the movie, and I would say go get it. I would say watch it, and it's extremely intense and heartbreaking about uh, your kid on drugs. It's it's very. I thought it was very good. Um, I watched Dog's Way Home because I was trying to get the girls out of the house. And enjoyed it. It's fine. It, yeah. It's, yeah, wait. Right in the, the same vein as the other movies by the same guy. You can, A Dog's Purpose. You can, and, yeah. You can wait until it's on. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, Mary Queen of Scots. I enjoyed it. I have no idea how historically accurate that is. I don't want to get into that. Uh, is it? Because, holy, I was like, whoa. Wow. I mean, you kind of sit there and think, wow. It's fairly well, accurate. Really? Yeah. Except for the dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't talk that way. Really? It's fairly historically accurate. Okay. Well, go see it because you will learn a lot. I was, I was fascinated. Um, 
Who's in that? That was the girl from Game of Thrones and who was the other Cersei one? Cersei uh, and... Um, um, yeah, Cersei Oh, and, and the girl that did... Um, oh, yeah, we talked about this last Robbie, right? Robbie. Yeah, The one, Roni. And then, of course, um, I saw first she formed and then... Uh, Looks like... Oh, Taxi Driver? Well, what I was saying is that... Um, so you were digging the first back man, into first the man, De Niro's. The, no, the screenplay, because <laughs> it was original, like, original screenplay, and the guy that wrote the screenplay for um, First Reformed also did Taxi Driver, Raging and Raging Bull, and American Gigolo. Ha <laughs> ha, sorry. Um, my listing is, again, Virgil Wanderer by Leif Inger, and uh, my diary of Virginia Woolf. I also, let's see, on my... <clears throat> Radar, Roma, the favorite, and Vice are the ones that I think I can get done. Act, oh, I want to see Glass too. And in my queue, um, I've been watching Off Camera with Sam Jones. It's on Netflix. It's got a lot of actors on there, and I find it fascinating. I started with Robert Downey Jr. because I because yeah, because he's Robert Downey Jr. And I watched Sex Education, which I also enjoyed. There you go. All right, sorry, I'm just sniffing because I'm draining fluid out of my mm, nose. Adderall over there? Uh, so, <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, I watched quite a few things, um, but the biggest thing I want to oh, say that is that I listened to what? I, saw, I tried to watch a very English scandal. Um, yeah, I finished a very tried. English scandal. <laughs> you sleep? I love watching you, you know. Right, <laughs> She's just, you can't see it. She's just shaking her head. I can't. I, I couldn't do it. Why? I don't know. It's I really quirky and weird. It is. Was it too funny? No. Too awkward for you? Too awkward okay. for me. For Maybe she should watch it. Everyone should watch it then because the is awkward. I also think I should watch it at a different time. Maybe it was a different, wrong night. Yeah. Um, I watched the Slap Library or YouTube <clears throat> and I watched All the President's Men again. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sniffling still. Uh, Destination Wedding is on Netflix or Prime is one of those two. But that's with Keanu Reeves and don't oh. ask. Date <laughs> Night. <laughs> this was date a real, night. I thought this was a reality series. Yeah. I'm like, what? Because I'm pretty sure there's a reality series called there's, Destination it, Wedding. There is. Uh, Destination Wedding is Keanu Reeves bringing him back with Rihanna Ryder. You just decided to watch All the President's Men? I like the script. I love It's a good movie. No, I love that movie. I own the movie. I love that movie. And it was... Timely, because Trump's being an idiot. So, moving on. Um, I also listened to Weezer's new album. The Teal album came out. And it's a whole bunch of covers. It's an album of covers. 80s, 60s, 50s classics. Very good. can listen to it when I'm working out or just getting my kids to understand that. I kind of forgot that came out this week, so I got to put that back in my queue. It's good music. It sounds good. Cool. Um, what else? Um, the Royal Rumble from WWE tonight. So, I'll be watching that instead of Rent Live, which is on Fox, because they're going to censor it, and I can't watch censored, neutered Rent. Um but break a leg, people. Wow. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, Roman Empire and Shit Soul are on Netflix. I'm going to be watching that. There are documentaries. Uh, we got to stop for a second. Rent is basically going to be neutered. censorized for TV. So they've cut out <laughs> some things and made adjustments. They it's made basically kind of being like Rent Jr. Yeah. <laughs> Rent Jr. <laughs> it's on Fox, <laughs> on, on normal broadcasting. So there are stuff that they can't put on there. Like Contact. Okay. And uh, Rent has yeah. to know what I'm talking about. Got Contact. It. Got it. Um, but it's Fox too. So, um, yeah. I think we had this discussion almost a year ago. Yeah. Because I think this is when we Greece. heard that it was going to be coming out. Yeah. I kind of blocked it out until now and they brought yeah. it back. <laughs> uh, so, Rodney, Tay, Break Legs. You won't need it, but, you know, I'm still going to say it. Um, what else? Disobedience is on Netflix. I'll be finishing watching that. But, uh, yeah. What's disobedience? It uh, has Rachel Weiss, and it's basically about two women in oh, yes. London, England, who are lovers, that. and they're in the Jewish community who don't allow that kind of thing, and how they secretly get back together. And I want to see that. I, I watched it. Yeah, screenplay was that. cool, but I needed to watch it. So yeah. God, you read fast. I can't. screenplays. It just no. But yeah, he reads so fast. I can't yeah. do that. So, yeah, in case anyone wants to know where I get my screenplays from, just Google the screenplay you're looking for. It'll pop up. Either you pay for it or you don't. But usually during Academy Awards season, most scripts that are movies like Black <laughs> Panther, Black Klansman are available because 
the academy wants people to read them. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go to pay for it, make sure it's through a legit place that yes. actually the money is going back to the, the screenwriter or the guild somehow. I feel like yes. an idiot today asking you where to. That was this morning, Valerie. And I was. I said today. Yeah. I don't sleep, people. She messaged me at uh, what time was it? 2 1 30. Uh, about a play she wanted to find. <laughs> this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So. Because I read uh, an article about a play and I wanted to watch it. It looked fantastic. I mean, I wanted to read it. It looked fantastic. And so I was like, "How? where do I get this? Because I didn't even think that it would be anywhere you could find it. Most plays, for the record, um, are not readily available. That The ones on Broadway right now are not available probably until like six months. But see, this so. one is, isn't it? But this one came out last year, so it's available. Oh. You read an article that's like probably a year old. I did? Yeah. God. Sleepy. I, 2018, it, 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 2019. Away. A little, yeah. I was a little tired. Yeah. So that's my wrap up. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, please listen to the Teal album if you're nostalgic for cool music. So awesome. Well, I think that pretty much shimmies up our show. Mm-hmm. Anthony, where can we find you? I uh, over Facebook. I am Anthony Carter one six seven. At Twitter is S M T O. R C H I O and my Instagram is Ant Carter eighty five, which we'll have on the notes in case you couldn't get that written down so quickly. Um, I'm at Valerie uh, VB Vidmar on Twitter, on Instagram, I'm Penny Lane sixty four, and Facebook. I am Valerie Lorraine. Um, but go on there because my birthday's coming up, and yeah, I had uh, something that I was really. Um, I have like a, basically a charity going on for my birthday gift. So if you want to go on there and read about a nice local, um, donation to charity. Yeah. Sorry. Fund. I'm just kind of blanking out. Um, you can take a look. And you can find me pretty much everywhere as GF media or GF media CEO. Um, you can only find me on Facebook as Goat Factor Media Entertainment. You can see some of my work there. Um, going on almost two months of not having a personal Facebook. This is just weird. <laughs> Do you feel lighter? Better? I feel a little less stressed in that area, mm-hmm. but I have no clue what's going on. Like I'm texting people to try to like get things, but it's like, oh, I'm like three days short on like that information. But my wife, if she sees something, she kind of, says, hey, this is going on. Are you interested? <laughs> but it's kind of, it's weird. I think I'll, I'll settle into it in another month or so. Um, but yeah, you can find us at culturalstew.net, at culturalstew.net on Twitter or culturalstew on Facebook. And you can interact with us on any of those and give us some feedback. Let us know what you're into, what you're not into, what we're doing good, what we're doing bad. What are your picks for the Oscars? What would you like to see us cover? Any topics that you have something of interest? Feel free to share. Happy anniversary, guys. Oh, yes. Happy anniversary. You too. Here's to another year. All right. Later. Ciao. Ciao. I was going to say ciao. The intro and break music is Please Listen Carefully by Jazir, available through the Creative Commons license from Free Music Archive. The outgoing music is provided by Epidemic Sound. Please see our show notes for details on what the outgoing song is and who it is by. And also, as always, if you have a piece of music that you'd like us to play or consider playing, please contact us today.
Like what you've heard? Want to continue to hear more? Please consider Patreon. What is Patreon, you ask? Patreon is a content creator support site, a way for people to support the things they love and allow creators to continue creating the content that they love. Please consider heading over to patreon.com slash gfmedia and becoming a Patreon supporter today.